thought I'd give you another example of finding and classifying critical points uh, to extend what we're able to get through in class and the examples in the book. So here's an example question that section two had up at the very end of class but didn't have a lot of time to deal with uh, on Friday. So we're asked to find the local maxima, local minima, and critical points of this polynomial function of x and y. And so before we start working this, let me give a quick rundown of the steps that we would follow to go through this. So first of all, we need to find the critical points. Critical points are where the gradient is zero or undefined, so to get the gradient, we need to find the first order partial derivatives. Once we've got them, let's see where they're zero or undefined. Remember, we need both of them to be zero at the same time for the gradient to be zero. Once we've got the critical points, we can use the discriminant to try to classify each of them. And so we'll do that by, first of all, finding the second order partial derivatives, because remember, that's what the discriminant is based on. We'll calculate that discriminant using those second order partials, and then we'll interpret it. Is it positive, negative, or zero? And if it's positive, what do we know about fxx? that tells us in terms of local maximum or local minimum. So about this question, first thing we've got to do, find the partial derivatives. You might want to take a minute, back up the video, and double check these on your own with a copy of the function in front of you. But here they are. So the gradient is zero when both of those functions, the partial with respect to x and the partial with respect to y, are zero at the same time. Now, the tricky part here, and what makes this perhaps the most difficult step of all of these optimization questions, is figuring out how, when are they both zero? Because you've got two variables, two equations, and they both have x squared in them. So you can't just go about solving for x and substituting in. You might be able to go about solving for y, but that's not always even going to be something that works. So you kind of have to look at each piece separately. Let's take a closer look at that first equation. We look at this and we say, well, there's a 6 and an x in everything. So what if we pulled those out? So we'd have 6x times x minus y minus 1. So we want that to be 0. Well, that's a lot easier to think about when we do the factoring. We've got this, so this whole thing is equal to zero. That means that either this guy's zero or this guy's zero. Uh, in fact, they could both be zero, but uh, it gives us two cases. Either x is zero or x minus y minus one is zero. So there's our cases. And so we're going to call this guy case A, and we'll call this guy case B. And let's start by looking at the case A where x is 0. So when x is 0, we're going to look at, this remember is our f sub y of x, y. And we're going to see what happens when x is 0. Well, when x is 0, this becomes a bit simpler. It's 12y plus 3 equals 0. And that means that y has to be minus a quarter. So combining that with the fact that x is 0, we get 0 minus a quarter is a critical point. And so we're going to start building up a table showing the places where we've got critical points. And then we'll fill it in later with our fxx, our discriminant, and what we can use that information to conclude. Okay, so that was case A. Now remember, case B was when x minus y minus 1 is 0. Well, that's the same thing, adding the y and the, the, the minus y and the minus 1 over to the other side. That says that x is equal to y plus 1. So again, we've got fy of xy here, and we want him to be 0. So we plug in x equals y plus 1. Oh, that doesn't look so bad. Uh, let's expand a little bit. 
Okay, let's simplify that a bit. So now we've got minus 3y squared plus 6y is 0. Well, that means that, let's factor out a minus 3y. That leaves us with a y and a minus 2. That guy has to be 0. So for that to be 0, we either need y equals 0 or y equals 2. So now, let's see what happens because we need x values that go with that. So we've got down here I put in 1, 0 because when we have y equals 0 that says that x equals 0 plus 1 which is 1 so we get the critical point, the critical point 1, 0. For y equals 2 that gives us the critical point x equals 2 plus 1, 3. So that gives us the critical point 3, 2. That's our second new critical point down there. So we found our y values. This guy said y is 0 or y is 2. We went back and found our x's. OK, now we've got all of our critical points. Now we need to go after the discriminant. For the discriminant, we need the second order partials. So now might be a good moment if you need to pause this, back up, compute the second order partials. So we've got them. That says our discriminant then, remember this is fxx times fyy minus fxy squared. All right. So we've got that, and I've expanded and simplified it just a little bit there to make it maybe a bit easier to plug into. So fxx, it's up here, we plug in 0 minus a quarter, we get minus 6, oops, we get plus 6 fourths, because we've got a minus times a minus. Minus 6 is minus 9 halves. The major thing is that we get that it's negative. Uh, let's do all of our fxx's. Uh, here we get 6, plug in 1 and 0, so we get 12 minus 6 is 6. Ooh, 3 and 2, we get 36 minus 12 minus 6, that's 36 minus 18, that's 18. On to the discriminant. So when we plug in 0 for x and minus a quarter for y, we get 72 times minus 5 quarters which, most importantly, is less than 0. Happens to be minus 54. But, so, discriminant less than 0, we don't care about this. Discriminant less than 0 means we've got a saddle point. Okay, what happens at 1, 0? Well, this factor becomes 2 minus 0 minus 1, so that's 72 minus 36. That's 36, which is greater than 0. So we've got a positive discriminant, and we've got positive fxx, which, if you remember, the discriminant being positive means we're going to have a local max or a local min. It's that cup shape, and when we've got a positive fxx, that's that cup that opens upward, and so when you've got a cup that opens up, the point at the bottom is a local minimum. Okay. One more discriminant to calculate. This becomes, well, let's see, we've got 2 times 3 minus 2 minus 1. That's 3. So we've got 72 times 3 minus 36 times 9. Save you the calculation. That's less than 0. It's actually minus 108. So that's being negative, says that we've got a saddle point there. So fortunately nothing where the discriminant was zero so we had to uh, say uh, we don't have any useful information could be local max, local min, saddle point, none of the above. Here we were able to make a complete classification of those three critical points. I hope you found this helpful.